Okay, we know that atoms have energy levels and the electrons formed in excited energy levels, the high energy levels, de-excite back down to the lower energy levels emitting photons. And they can do this in steps, so they can emit different photons like so. Okay, so because the en energy difference between the energy levels is around a couple of electron volts, you normally get UV or visible photons being emitted. Okay, so it turns out the nucleus of atoms also have their own energy levels. After an alpha or beta decay, the nucleus can be formed in an excited nuclear state, which can be represented in a similar way to how we represent uh, atomic energy levels, like this. Let's say after this alpha decay, the nucleus is formed in this state here, okay, the top uh, ex second excited nuclear state there. When it de-excites back down, it's going to emit a photon. Now, as you can see, in this case, the energies associated with the nuclear energy levels are not electron volts, but mega electron volts. So the energy of the photons that can be emitted during these transitions is much higher. So instead of uh, visible light or ultraviolet being emitted, we get gamma photons being emitted from the nucleus of the atoms. Okay, let's take magnesium 27 as an example. So the nucleus of magnesium 27 has an energy of 2.61 mega electron volts. It will undergo a beta minus decay to form aluminium 27. Now the aluminium can be formed in a nucleic excited state. So it can be either formed in the second nucleic excited state or the first nucleic excited state. It can also be formed as a ground state, but that in that case it won't emit a gamma photon. So let's say we form it on the second excited state here. Now this allows us to actually figure out the kinetic energy with which the electron is emitted. Now because we're going from this energy level here for the magnesium nucleus to uh, 1.02 mega electron volts, you just subtract them, and that's the kinetic energy with which the beta particle will be emitted. Okay, so and then also once it de excites, it can de excite in multiple ways and it can emit uh, gamma photons for each of those transitions there. Okay, in this question, we're asked to calculate the shortest possible wavelength that can be emitted from the aluminium 27 over here. So the shortest possible wavelength means the highest energy, so the highest frequency one, and that corresponds the biggest energy gap all the way from 1.02 to 0 megahertz volts so we can use the energy of a photon hf or hc over lambda and use hc over lambda the energy difference is going to be um, well let's hc first which is Planck's constant times the speed of light the energy difference is going to be 1.02 uh, mega electron volts so turn that into electron volts by times in by 10 to the 6 and then times in by the charge of an electron turn it into joules this gives us a wavelength of 1.22 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, okay, which is around 0 0.001 nanometer. So that's definitely a gamma wave. Okay, in this question, we're asked to calculate the maximum possible kinetic energy of the electron that's emitted. So that's the electron that uh, comes from the beta decay of the magnesium 27. So the maximum possible energy would be straight from here to the ground state. However, the question does specify that a gamma photon must be emitted. So the biggest gap from magnesium to that one of the new excited nuclear energy levels is going to be this one here, though this transition from this state to this state. So if we work out that energy difference, that's going to give us the energy of the um, electron that's emitted, and that can turn that into joules like this. Now, when the nuclear excited state is formed, it tends to decay very quickly to emit a gamma photon. So it tends to be in the order of 10 to the minus 12 seconds. However, there are some nuclei which form a longer living uh, nuclear excited state. This is what we call a metastable state because these nuclear excited states um, are stable for a lot longer and they decay over a long period of time. For example, six hours for technetium. Okay, so these relatively long lived metastable states can be very useful. For example, as applications of medical traces. So, mobidium decays into technetium 99 and that can be formed in a metastable nuclear state, which decays into its ground state with a half-life of six hours. So this means we can use it as a medical tracer. So you can inject it into a person or they can ingest it and it will emit gamma waves and it only emit gamma waves. So that means that uh, once it's ingested, it won't be too ionizing, for example, alpha or beta, which would ionize everything and could cause problems. So another reason for this use is that if the fact that if it's gamma rays, then it can leave the body and can be detected outside by a detector and so it can be used as a tracer. The half-life is long enough that you can complete the diagnosis within the six hours, but it's short enough that once the ex examination is done, it doesn't remain inside the body. Also, the technetium that's formed isn't too toxic.